In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. Hearty welcome to the Eucharist, my dear sisters and brothers, on this feast of St. Methodio, St. Cyril, and of course, St. Valentine. Today is the 14th of February. We pray to the saints to bless us. Let's begin this Eucharistic sacrifice to putting ourselves in God's presence and asking his forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who enlightened the Slavic peoples, through the brothers, saints, Cyril and Methodius, grant that our hearts may grasp the words of your teaching and perfect us as a people of one accord in true faith and right confession. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Kindly sit for the readings. A reading from the letter of St. James. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the Dispariance, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives graciously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. For let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, and its flower fall and its beauty perishes so also will the rich man fade away in the midst of all his pursuits. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
Our response is, show me compassion that I may live. All together, show me compassion that I may live. Before I was humbled, I strayed, but now I keep your word. Our response, show me compassion that I may live. You are good and you do what is good. Teach me your statutes. Our response, show me compassion that I may live. It was good for me to be humbled that I might learn your statutes. Our response, show me compassion that I may live. The law from your mouth means more to me than large quantities of silver and gold. Our response, show me compassion that I may live. O Lord, I know that your decrees are right. Though I am humbled, you are just. Our response, show me compassion that I may live. Let your merciful love console me by your promise to your servant. Our response, show me compassion that I may live. Kindly stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the Pharisees came and began to argue with Jesus, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. He left them, got into the boat again, and went to the other side. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, today is the 14th of February, and uh, saying this feast of Saint Cyril Methodius, the patrons, co-patrons of Europe, and we've got uh, also Saint Valentine, very popular saint, uh, but uh, who was died in the third third century or so. Coming to the first reading, James, we begin today and carry on for two weeks, but I'll be out, so I won't have a chance to really comment on uh, this uh, reading, uh, this, this epistle, this letter of St. James. Uh, it was uh, written by James, a lot of discussion, I won't get about who this James, which there are about four or five Jameses in the different readings of the New Testament. Uh, the, uh, there's the brother of John, there's the evangelist, there's also this one author of this book. Then there is also uh, this son of Alphaeus, and, and really the scholars have been trying to identify who it is. But uh, let's, uh, we'll leave that for another occasion. Here we have uh, an epistle, which I must tell you, that uh, Luther uh, f did not like this uh, epistle at all, and uh, Luther called it a, a stroy apostle, epistle, uh, meaning it's, it's a book which has got straw, which so did not have very much. Later on, he changed his mind a bit because it was one of the uh, Council of Trent really officially accepted it, and then Luther said, I find something in this, but it was, uh, doesn't give too much. Today, it is uh, accepted very much for saying it's the epistle which has given us a lot of the social teaching of the church. Uh, today's uh, reading tells us that uh, following our Lord is speaking to the people. It's an epistle written in general, not to a particular uh, group or church, but in general. Uh, this only gives a little bit of uh, how works are also important. You'll find that later on when you hear the readings. But it speaks here about the tests and the difficulties and the trials a Christian must endure in following Jesus. Uh, it's very 
clo close to the yesterday's uh, Beatitudes of St. Luke, where he speaks, blessed are you when people uh, reject you and persecute you for the sake of the Son of Man, uh, very similar to this, uh, this uh, reading this from St. James. Uh, coming to the Gospel, St. Mark, uh, Jesus and the Pharisees were arguing, they always argued. The reading does not tell us what they argued about. The mentality of the Pharisees was always that you must follow the law very, very uh, strictly, the word of the law. Jesus was going deeper, follow the spirit of the law, he was explaining how the, you must go deeper than what the law asks and how you must uh, love people, forgive people, build up uh, uh, justice, society of justice and uh, for that if you've got to uh, really break the law, sometimes you can't break the man is more important than the law mentioned to you about the healing on the Sabbath, they were upset about Jesus, so here it doesn't say it will almost certainly be about some uh, liturgical rule, some rule Jesus was not observing, and they said now prove to us that what you're saying is, uh, give us a sign from heaven uh, they had the miracles of Jesus, he had healed so many people, he had uh, taken away, healed people who were possessed, taken away the devil, the demon, uh, but they said, no, show us something directly from heaven, show that God is doing this, not you. And uh, so finally Jesus says, no sign will be given his generation. Uh, Jesus knew they were not, they didn't want to accept him, it was because they rejected his person, his teaching, he was, he was making life too uncomfortable for them. So, gee, so that is really, sometimes it happens, both the readings tell us about the discomfort of following Jesus. Following Jesus brings sometimes crosses, difficulties, to follow your conscience sometimes is uh, not popular, but you've got to follow your conscience, that's what God tells you. It's easier to be popular and do what people want rather than do what God wants. That's really the message of today's readings. Saying today is a feast of, uh, on Saint Valentine, we don't know much, except that he was a bishop of Terni, probably, in the third century. And uh, uh, couldn't find much about linking him with how is he the patron of uh, uh, people who are fond of each other, etc. There's nothing very special in his life which uh, directly links it. Possibly the church Christianized a feast. But the Cyril and Methodius were very important saints in the sense that uh, Cyril was a monk, Methodius was, a, was made a bishop by the Pope, and uh, they were born uh, and was sent uh, to the Slavs. That they were sent to the Ukraine, the area which is now Ukraine, and then after it was transferred to other places. And what was significant of them was that they taught, they were two brothers, and they taught very much uh, the scripture, and they translated the liturgy into the local language, and began uh, also having a precursor of our own times, having the liturgy in the local language. There were lots of division, but the Pope, he was on the east, Ukraine, but the Pope on the west supported him, Adrian II, and uh, he, therefore they were one of those uh, great saints of the East were insisting on links with the Pope. You know, finally there was a schism and the East broke up, but they were very keen on keeping links with Rome, make the, keeping the church united. That's what they did. And so they're honored till today. And Pope John Paul II declared them patrons, I think it was in 1980 or so, patrons of Europe. And so we pray to them that we too might be always dedicated to the church, working for the church, for the unity of the church. God bless each one of you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, and become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, O Lord, upon the offerings which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of saints Cyril and Methodius. Grant that these gifts may become the sign of a new humanity reconciled to you in loving charity. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints you make your church fruitful with strength ever new offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled their great example lends us courage their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do so lord with all the angels and saints we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, Saint Cyril, Saint Methodius, Saint Valentine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be quest to eternal life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence of the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy keep us free from sin, safe from all distress. We wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. It offers a sign of peace, Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, be only who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. O God, Father of all nations, who make us sharers in the one bread and the one spirit and heirs of the eternal banquet, grant in your kindness that on the feast day of Saints Cyril and Methodius, that the multitude of your children persevering in the same faith may be united in building up the kingdom of justice and of peace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass then, let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God bless each one of you and a special happy feast to the Cyrils and Methodiuses and Valentines. God bless each one of you. Uh, I've got to tell you that I'm uh, going out, I'm going to Rome for the meeting of our Council of Cardinals with the Holy Father. Pray for me in a special way and pray for the Holy Father and all our group of cardinals. We are seven of us who meet the Holy Father for three days. Uh, so I'll be away and I'll uh, 
I've got a, a few other meetings also with this. So I think I'll say Mass for you now on not next Sunday will be another bishop. And then the following Sunday I'll be back. God bless you and uh, keep well. well. We'll see each other soon. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have called you and you are